Number three. So what, was that good for, uh, was the abolition of the slave trade in D.C. good or bad for the North? Good. All right, so the North's got California, they got the abolition of slave trade. They couldn't trade slaves. They couldn't have them, couldn't trade them. Number three, New Mexico Territory, which is New Mexico and Arizona, would, um, New Mexico and Utah Territory, so this territory and this territory would be decided by popular sovereignty. Look up on this map and tell me what type of land is in the Utah and New Mexico Territory. Desert. Desert and mountain. What is not going to be there? Plants. Wildlife. <laughs> so in the end, how do these, how do these territories end up going? No slave. No slave. So who's this better for? North. In fact, William Seward said God ordained the Wilmot Proviso because God himself was made sure that those states did not become free, or not become slave. Number four. So the North is doing pretty well. What was the, what the South want? What was the one thing they really wanted? The, the North couldn't take away slavery in the South and the states that already had. Well, that wasn't even up for a debate, the future slave law. They wanted a really, really strict fugitive slave law, which is what they got. Now, the last part, New Mexico actually was claiming some land from Texas, and Texas wanted it, so the government gave Texas $10 million for some land. I don't know that that one's going to be on the AP exam, but that's the fifth part of the actual copy. Uh, New Mexico, the government actually paid Texas for some land that New Mexico claimed was theirs. They literally, the New Mexico Territory and the Texas Territory, the state of Texas, actually, they disagreed on where their boundaries were, and so the government paid Texas for the dispute. So is that why it's a straight line now? Yeah, I don't exactly know exactly where it is. It's not all displayed, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, these are definitely straight lines with it. But actually, like part of this actually was the Gaston purchase, which we'll get to. Um, okay, so that is Compromise of 1850, and the North definitely got the better of the deal. And now the Fugitive Slave Law becomes the big thing between the North and the South. Territories, Fugitive Slave Law. But the North was pissed at the Fugitive Slave Law. What did they do with the Fugitive Slave Law? Ignored it. Ignored it. So they got Florida, they got California, they got Papa Sovereignty, they got abolition of slave trade in D.C., and they're going to go ahead and ignore the one thing they're supposed to do. And this really makes the North, uh, this really makes the South mad. In fact, um, personal liberty laws were, um, some states refused to do it, so this went again to the Supreme Court in Abelman versus Booth. And in Abelman versus Booth, again, it was challenged, do states have the right to ignore the just slave law? This is a test. This is only a test. Okay. Oops. Let's see. 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 Let's Aylwin versus Booth reaffirms Prigg and says, yes, you have to follow the Fugitive Slave Law. What does the North continue to do? Ignore, Ignore the Fugitive Slave Law. The North also won out the Compromise of 1850. Had there been war, had there been no compromise, the North might very well have lost the war at this point. But it's going to go another 10 years before the war, which is going to make people who were on the fence about abolition move towards abolition as time went on. It's going to give, by the way, what are the North's biggest advantages? Anyone know? We haven't gotten there yet. Kentucky. Well, industry, railroads, and population. 10 more years gave them more industry, more railroads, and because of immigration, more population. And by 1860, there were very few things the South had going for it other than some good generals. 
Had they waited another few years, every year they waited, the North got stronger and stronger. They fight a hundred civil wars, the North's going to win 99 and a half of them. The fact that the war went that long is actually kind of testament to the South generals and testament to how incompetent some of the Northern generals were. Had they put Ulysses Grant in charge of the army from the get-go, the war would have lasted about an hour and a half. Because you know Grant was brutal. He was the most brutal general I think America's ever had. Because he had a very, very specific philosophy. Here was his philosophy. I've got more bullets than you do. I've got more men than you do. I'm willing to have as many of my men die so long as all of you die. And I will have all of you die. And I don't care how many of my men I lose, but you're all dying. That's why it's not Yes, McClellan ran away. Um, Grant, you, I mean, there would be battles where the North would lose 15,000 men in a single battle, but they'd win the battle. Many people thought that was basically just, you know, slaughter. But the North lost 15,000, but the South lost 18,000. What was the problem? The South had way fewer people to lose, didn't they? They couldn't afford losing that many, and he knew it. That's a really rough way to go about fighting. I'm okay losing all of my men, but you're all dying. That's why he's on the 50. Although he is arguably the worst president ever had in our country's history. Um, when we were little, that's who, like, Ed Turner, we all had to dress up as, like, a famous character. Nah, you were in the U.S. Grant? Yep. I remember that's, that. You remember him dressing up like U.S. Grant? No, I remember me dressing up as Clara Barton. Oh, look at you, Angel of the Battlefield. Look at that. Um, let's talk about the election of 1852. As per usual, what type of person are the Whigs going to nominate? A general. Yeah, a general. Does he also die in office? He doesn't get elected. Oh. Um, the Whigs nominate. The Whigs nominate Winfield Scott, who was the other big general during the Mexican War, other than Zachary Taylor. His nickname was Old Fuss and Feathers, which is one of my favorite nicknames. That's so stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> Old Fuss and Feathers. That's not the best nickname, right, for a general? The best general nickname is John Pershing's nickname. He's a World War I um, Supreme Commander. His name was Black John Black Jack Pershing. That's an awesome. Name. Black John Black Jack Pershing. John Black Jack Pershing. All right, we got Blackjack on our side. That's an awesome name for a general. What's the greatest ever, what do you think is the greatest sports nickname? I think it's Mariano Rivera's nickname. Here. Well, he was a relief pitcher, right? And by far, and by far, and it's not close, the greatest relief pitcher of all time. It's not even close. When he would come out, they would play Inner Sandman by Metallica because he was going to put the other team to sleep. And his nickname, so think about this, you're up to bat. Yankee Stadium is rocking Metallica as this guy comes towards you. And his nickname is the Hammer of God. <laughs> right? How scared are you right off the bat that this giant song is coming at you and a dude is coming at you and his nickname is, you don't get the nickname Hammer of God without being awesome. Right? So you will never get that. No. I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be like the pony's assistant or something. Like that. The Democrat was a guy named Franklin Pierce. That's Mr. Nolan's favorite president. That's really odd. Um, Franklin Pierce Something tells me he wins. Um, Franklin Pierce was from Vermont. But when I was in Vermont this summer, I wanted to look up famous people from Vermont because honestly the only one I could think of was Franklin Pierce and then the Ben and Jerry's guys. And I looked it up online and honestly, there weren't that many more people other than Franklin Pierce and the Ben and Jerry guy who were in Vermont. Everyone's happy, but no one's famous. All right? Um, we got lots of fame and we got lots of famous people from Kentucky, right? High poverty, high amount of fame. Low poverty, no one's famous. <laughs> um, Franklin Pierce was a northerner who wasn't particularly against slavery. Why might he be an attractive candidate to Democrats? 
Because he can sympathize with both sides. He could draw northerners who aren't big abolitionists, and he could also draw southerners because they're certainly not going to vote for Whigs. Winfield Scott was anti slavery, so the anti slavery people liked him, but he was pro fugitive slave law. So no one was excited about Winfield Scott. He was anti slave. All right. And I also support the brutal fugitive slave law. Oh. Great. So he was the kind of back and forth. Like he, didn't really he was a middle of the road guy. Both these guys were. And Franklin Pierce is elected in 1852. And lots of things happen under Franklin Pierce's. I'm sorry, this thing's from New Hampshire. I'm pretty sure he's from Vermont, actually. We can look that up. If you, somebody wants to look that up on, on their telephonic device. Yes. Um, so there wasn't a third party in this one? Not, in, not a significant one, no. Okay. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is New Hampshire. I could have swore it was Vermont. Did you look it up? I could have swore that I did. You could have swore that means you don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I could have sworn, but I might not have sworn. <laughs> um, sure. Do what? Oh, Did he ever live in Vermont? Oh, hold on. Read everything, and if he went to Vermont at least once, I'm claiming victory. He did. You probably did. They're pretty close. Franklin Pierce. There's a Franklin Pierce University. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 How is that the case? He has to have been. No, it's not. That's weird. I looked at Franklin Pierce, Vermont. It's saying it's, it's saying in New Hampshire, but it showed up. It's like the only thing that showed up about it. I'm, I'm gonna, like most things, I'm gonna go ahead and assume I'm a hundred percent right until I'm proven to be one hundred percent right. right. Really? 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 Although he was not an overwhelmingly powerful president. In fact, he was seen by many as being weak, but lots of stuff happened. Some of them are an expansion. Um, this is some of my favorite stuff. Some of the most ridiculous things that happened. Um, number one, if you're on a ship, shut up. What do you want? Is this under expansion? Yeah, that's what it is. What about what what is it? Oh. M -effort. <laughs> <laughs> and for people at home, her name initials are M and F. <laughs> I hope Mr. Frederick is on. This is going on. It's, it's almost 13. Okay, stop. 